and welcome back to Hey, I'm Drake Favor, the Bundesliga podcast that covers everything there is known in the English language about Eintracht Frankfurt, the best club in the Bundesliga, the best club in Germany, the best club in Europe, the best club in the world for that matter. But we are a little bit biased. I am your host, Brian NKC. Folks, yes, I'm back. I know I've been kind of, uh, uh, when you have a kid, suddenly uh, other stuff gets in the way. But me and uh, little Eintracht Luke have been enjoying everything going on with the Eintracht, including the craziness that is the transfer window. So I thought this would be the perfect time to return to the podcast and touch on this crazy whirlwind transfer window that the Eintracht had and, you know, to a little bit of what's been going on in the Bundesliga with the man who happens to host with his uh Eintracht legend of a father, uh, the German Foosball podcast. On a weekly basis, they cover everything that's ongoing within the German football pyramid. They love to touch on the Eintracht. They love to touch on the Schweizer Liga because it's absolutely banana and it's crazy. It's a, none other than the host of that said podcast, Marcus Fiertoff. Hello, Marcus, and welcome back. Thank you, Brian. As always, um, a pleasure to, to speak with you. And yeah, look forward to, to doing an episode where we get to focus a bit, uh, I say, disproportionately on only one team. Because when, when I do it with that, we obviously want to touch upon Eintracht uh, a lot. But there are 17 other teams in the league. And there's also the Zweite Bundesliga and a lot of things happening. But it's nice to discuss all things uh, Eintracht with you. Not a problem. I'm glad to have you back on. So let's kick off with where we were leaving Eintracht. Because at that time, uh, at the end, uh, once we hit the winter pause, though, a little weird in that we didn't play all uh, 17 matches. So we couldn't, uh, we couldn't get the title a fall champion over. All right. Well, Leverkusen pretty much had wrapped that up. But uh, we didn't have technically a fall champion. What you had was Eintracht finishing in second in their European group. So they have to go into the this kind of weird playoff round where they uh, get the third place play, a third place team from the Europa League group phase. Uh, we got Union saint In case anyone has no idea, uh, they are in uh, the Belgian capital of Brussels and are currently leading uh, the, the race for the Belgian championship. The Eintracht still was holding on to a European place and sixth place at that time before uh, the transfer started going in. But Marcus, what did you make at first of the fall that the Eintracht had? Were you satisfied with the performance of the Dino Topolo kids or were you thinking there's a lot left to be desired here? Well, a little bit of both, I think, in the sense that, you know, it was Dino Topmuller's first proper stab at it. And we know that he had the experience at Bayern with Julian Nagelsmann, Luxembourg, etc. But it was a bit of a, say, maybe a bit of a gamble in terms of what to to expect. Uh, you know, Eintracht Frankfurt is a is a club in which is a big club. It's also a club with, with massive potential in terms of where it can can go and so there's always a bit of question marks in terms of what will the impact be from Dino Topmuller on this team but I and especially within the context of this was a rebuilding phase as well and you look at the summer signings we'll talk about the winter signings but the summer signings were pretty significant there were a lot of players coming in both more experienced players through a Koch but then you had younger players as well but you look back at that now in terms of putting that team together being able to get it, put an identity on a team, being able to be up there among the European positions. We talked before we we came on air about where Eintracht used to be, namely when my dad used to play and stuff like that. And it's important, I think, to put that or have that as a reminder in terms of what we should expect from Eintracht. This is an extremely, one of the most exciting clubs in Germany. But Dino Topmuller is now continued into that trend that that Eintracht Frankfurt have found themselves in la- in the last few years in terms of being a regular contender for Europe, making it, yes, com- Conference League, but making it out, playing now Union Sanjala, and also playing with exciting profiles in mind. And so I would say it's very promising what we've seen from Dino Topmuller. And let's not forget, Eintracht Frankfurt are two points behind RB Leipzig. And I think if you were to say that to, to, to us Eintracht fans before the season, you say, okay, well, that that would sound pretty good. So, yeah, I'm very happy with with what Dino Topman has done with the team. And you look at the team now and the profiles they have and some of the signings, 
And it's, that's a huge credit to Marcus Crusher as well, who I think uh, will, you know, he's linked to the Liverpool job and etc. But yeah, I'm 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 pretty happy with uh, with 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 Eintracht's fall. Yeah, I, if there's any Liverpool fan who's listening to those podcasts, of which welcome, uh, I will say, get your grubby paws off. Crusher belongs <laughs> to us. <laughs> uh, go. Let's get right to it. Eintracht in a good position uh, when it comes to European qualification. You kind of hinted there, just a couple points off of Leipzig. Uh, you could even look at the way that Stuttgart is starting to fall, and I I wonder if they'll be able to kind of get a little bit of a rebound. Uh, you know, with Garas, once Garassi is up and running uh, at his return, we'll see. But I'm sort of almost wondering, it's like, can we catch Leipzig? Perhaps. Can we catch Stuttgart? I think that's even more likely, though I think Stuttgart might fall down to maybe 6th, 7th. I, I think they've got enough points in the bag to be able to fend off anyone who is uh, from 8th place and below at present time. But looking at what the Eintracht has made. So you mentioned uh, Roman Koch, uh, who was a real key defensive signing for us. Eintracht has made his uh, loan move permanent from Leeds United. I think Leeds United is just uh, a little skint. For money, uh, when you're when when once you exit the Premier League, if you don't immediately return, you're really hard up for cash. Uh, I think your dad played for a couple English teams that once they got really good from the Premier League, were hard up for cash. So uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> I think the really, uh, the, the connection uh, can be made. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, looking at some of the other things that have been made, so that's like. Kreisdisch, the Austrian international on loan for Wolverhampton Wanderers. Looking for more of uh, kind of central home where he can play up top with uh, Omar Marmouche playing for Egypt in the AFCON. Uh, sadly, he is out with a cold, so he has not technically returned to the Eintracht, but uh, sad to say, Egypt did not come away with a victory in that tournament, so here's hoping that he comes back with some fire in his belly once he gets that uh, influenza parasite out of himself. Um, what some of the other players that have been signed are, you know, uh, Mateo Ahoya, Nathan, uh, Nathaniel Brown, uh, a couple really long term, I would say, projects that the Eintracht has brought in, uh, more the immediate sort of guys, as I mentioned, Sasha, uh, earlier on, and another, uh, Eintracht loan signing from the Premier League is Donny van de Beek. Um, he's put each of those uh, Premier League loan signings have you know immediately seen playing time. What can you tell me about van de Beek that most Eintracht fans might not know? As Klasdish is a known commodity, having played at Stuttgart before his move to England. Yeah, I mean it's it's an interesting profile with Donny van de Beek, and I feel a bit. Um sorry for him in the sense that he's really never been able to find his footing since he did so well with that Ajax team who we remember were so close to a Champions League final and then lost it late on through a Lucas Mora goal. Um, And he was part of that kind of golden generation of Dutch players. We remember Frankie de Jong, we remember uh, De Ligt and the De Jong Barcelona, De Ligt Bayern. And Donny van der Beek was one of those midfielders that kind of I wouldn't say he had any pronounced strengths, but he, he seemed to be there at the right time. And, and and that shouldn't be underrated in terms of that feel or timing that you have for for, for being in those right spaces and, and pull up with some important goals. And then that's why Man United signed him. And unfortunately, he was able to find his, his proper feet there. Now, where is his best position? You know, Eintracht maybe tried to push him a bit forward there and play a bit higher up. And in Man United, he competed against Bruno Fernandes, who, who you know, is who's never injured, who always plays and is the captain. So there are circumstances there, coupled with the fact that, you know, he, he hasn't probably done as well as, as you'd hope to. Now, I think the Bundesliga would suit him well. I think Eintracht would, would suit him well. Um, you know, he's been without that regular, consistent playing time uh, for a while now, so I would preach some patience. But even still, I think Eintracht is a is a great place for him to kind of revive his 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 career a bit. He's still young; he's only twenty six. And the same goes for for Sasha Kalajic as well, who who who's been out of it. He's had a serious knee injury, and coming back now, it's there. There is, I guess, a foundation for them to succeed. Now, the question then is, how do Eintracht 
potentially accommodate to that without making it about one player. For someone like Sasa Klajic, he's a very different profile than a Marmouche, right? So <laughs> with Marmouche, it will be it will be more in behind. He'll try to stretch the team. Or like Kalajic will be more that target man. Now, Eintracht brought in Eketike as well from, from uh, PSG yes. on loan. And, and that is a fantastic like very exciting signing what as whether we know or do not know he he he's, he had a fantastic season with rem as a teenager and that's why psg bought him so these are players that have proven that they can perform on on the very highest stages and kyle I just we i remember we remember kind of the impact he had at stuttgart as well these are proven players who can definitely perform in the bundesliga it's just yeah, how do you best best use them? But admittedly, I haven't seen enough about Eketike, of Eketike either. So I'll be interested to see how he figures that team. But the fact that Marmouche will come back now after his call that you mentioned as well is, is great news. Um, so there's a lot of interesting profiles that Eintracht have. Um, and then, uh, yeah, it's like with anything, if you want to compete with a Leipzig or not, it's the, it's the, or the teams above Stuttgart, it is about the consistency, right? And I think that's mm. still... To take that next step is something that uh, Eintracht would 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 be in need of because I think you could see that, in the, especially the Darmstadt game, the Mainz game wasn't particularly impressive either. There are still things to be to be addressed. Yeah, when it does come to playing against Darmstadt, I know, I know, I know. Your dad said, you know, the the smaller derby. He, he's of course referring to the the Main derby as the main derby for the Eintracht uh, faithful and. We don't really. I mean, we can say Rhein Main Derby, but that's only because Mainz just won't go away from the Bundesliga. The Bundesliga needs to have their as many rivalries as they can because the Nord Derby is not here, is not back yet. We'll see about what Hamburg does. Uh, the, the Hamburg Stock Derby is in the Zweite Liga. The Berlin Stock Derby is broken up because Hertha. You know, I don't mind it when they say it's a derby. That's just a team that always irks me, but I'm really looking forward to the player that you mentioned that was signed here on deadline uh, day today uh, on loan with supposedly thirty million dollar buyout clause. He went through uh, Rems, uh, where he had a really great season, then get, was playing on uh, PSG uh, last year pretty well. I'm uh, not sure what the heck has kind of gone on in the intervening times, but Hugo. Ketike, I'm from the highlight reels I've seen, and I had heard him mentioned before uh, by, by by some French journalists who uh, cover the game. I'm really looking to, I'm really looking forward to seeing what he's able to bring. I mean, I know it's just a short loan, but with all the matches that the Eintracht has that are upcoming with the Europa Pokal still. I mean, it's the Europa Conference, yes. But you got the Bundesliga, you got the Europa Conference. There's plenty of chances and opportunities, I would think, for uh, some players to get some squad rotation and some playing time for everyone to have a moment to show what they have to bring to the table. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's um, it's it's one of those in which uh, Eintracht can... It's it's up to Top Miller basically to 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 choose in terms of how he wants to approach this. But when you have this many profiles, it also invites his own kind of uh, challenges as well in terms of how you want to to set out the team. Um, but with someone like Top Miller and you bring in these profiles as well, and you let's for, not forget the summer signings as well. They got Mpimbe from PSG. They got Nkunku. They have Hugo Larsson, the young Swede. William Paco who's probably, in my opinion, would make the, the, the Bundesliga fall team of the year as well. There's a lot to be to be optimistic about for Eintracht. 100%. Uh, now, I'd be remiss if we didn't kind of mention some of the players that have gone out and alone. Your fellow Norwegian and uh, Europa Pokal winner, Jens Berthehauge, uh, is leaving the Eintracht, going back up to, the, I've been told it's freezing cold up there at Bodo Glimt. Uh, Very true. Good luck and good luck in staying warm up there. Uh, Jakic uh, on loan to Augsburg, uh, and Gunkam to uh, to Mainz, Venig Ven and Nathaniel Brown uh, to Nuremberg. Nathaniel Brown just stay where he's at. Uh, Lucas Alario leaving uh, on a permanent deal to 
to Nacional in Brazil and Aronson to Arnhem. I mean, I look at Aronson and that and Benig and uh, Brown as kind of like, hey, we're, we see a future with you and we're letting you have the opportunity to get some more match minutes. You just aren't ready just yet. And I, I kept on thinking that there was something there for Aronson, but with Penta Hauga, I just feel like we did. I kind of wonder if Eintracht mismanaged the player that was there and that in the last, I guess you could say, 18 months, he really didn't kind of settle in during the second season uh, uh, at Eintracht. And then, you know, this, you know, he was out on loan for a spell last year and this season, you know. I just look at him as just kind of like a what went wrong with uh, the Jens Bote Hauge and Eintracht. Yeah, I mean, it's it's one of those in which I wouldn't necessarily, you know, pin it on 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 Eintracht either. I think Jens Bote Hauge needs to take his is part of the responsibility here because it's um, it's one of those in which Eintracht have wanted to keep it, take him out on loan, really try to help him regain his his form. And, you know, I don't know too much about him, but there has also been uh, murmurs about in terms of the application or the, I, I think part application, but also part you need, you cannot only have the, 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 the talent of a player. You need that sort of mental fortitude as well, which couples with it. Listen, the, his abilities are, are, are incredible. And I remember when he, when he, when he broke through at Buda Glimt and I remember because of his performance against Milan at San Siro, it was a big, it was a big uh, turning point for him in terms of Milan wanting to sign him as well. And then you go to Milan, which obviously is a step from the Norwegian league. And then he actually finds himself to the Eintracht, and and then he goes on loan in Ghent. But you look at his previous loans, and you know Ghent zero goals, zero assists. Then he found himself out of the fold, the national national team at Eintracht. He, you know, last this season, no goal involvement. You know, the couple of seasons ago, couple of goals, couple of assists. So, it's one of those in which he ultimately needs to find a kind of a, a stable footing. He's still young, um, but um, yeah, I'm afraid it's partly also not taking part, taking care of your opportunity as such. Because when you get loaned to the Dutch league or the Belgian league, sorry, and and it doesn't go as well. Listen, we don't know enough about his situation because I know how talented of a player he is. I've seen him, and it's 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 hugely enjoyable to watch him play. But uh, for different reasons, he hasn't um, he hasn't it hasn't worked out at uh, at Eintracht. Yeah, well, we wish everyone who's out on loan and has left Eintracht the best of luck uh, in their future endeavors. And for those who are just on a loan spell. Uh, Please get those match minutes. Take the opportunity that's presented to you with both hands. And uh, we look forward to seeing you in the summer for the preseason training. That being said, let's switch from the Eintracht specifically. We'll get uh, have some closing thoughts on the Eintracht in a second. But the Bundesliga, you didn't see the biggest transfer uh, news coming in from anyone else but Borussia Dortmund with Jadon Sancho and his return on loan. We'll see if they can get a buy clause. And then uh, two players going to uh, Bayern Munich and Bowie from Galatasaray and Eric Dyer from Tottenham Hotspur. I'm looking at Bayern getting, I guess that you could say, two fullbacks when I would say that they kind of need more of a center back kind of added in there. And you got uh, an attacking uh, threat for Borussia Dortmund that could create some sparks. I'm looking at these transfers that have been more of the uh, big headline grabbers because, you know, Leverkusen didn't really do anything. Uh, Leipzig only had uh, the one player move in from Napoli, that's, uh, whose name is escaping me. What are you thinking about the, uh, the moves of Borussia Dortmund and Bayern? Are these the kind of moves that will – Push them forward because right now I got I got I got a feeling that Bayern is going to have an empty cupboard this season for the first season in over a decade. 
Yeah, well, yeah, be careful what you say because you never know with Bayern. I mean, Dortmund practically gave it to Bayern last year, which is, oh, I think, was a huge frustration for any neutral. Um, but at the same time, I don't think that would be the case if they were in a similar situation this season because I don't think... I think Leverkusen are made of more grit than than this than the Dortmund team of of last year. But um, yeah, it's interesting signings with with Dortmund. I'm I'm very excited to have uh, Jaden Sancho back. I think as a, as a football neutral, as a football enjoyer, to see Jaden Sancho in form. Remember how he was at at Dortmund, um, electric, extremely entertaining to watch. Um, but also they brought in Ian Matson as well, the left back who's gotten rave reviews, who's been who is, uh, you know, there's always already talks of, of them kind of activating that clause to buy him for around 35 million euros. So they made a couple of good signings uh, there. With Bayern, I think it's one of those, obviously they got Harry Kane, which was a fantastic signing for them, fantastic signing for the Bundesliga. Um, this, I mean, this year you're bringing in the likes of, uh, you know, an Eric Dyer, and now they brought in Saragossa as well. You know, just to to kind of have a bit more a bit more depth in that squad. Sasha Boy, a young right back, kind of in that um, Christoph Freund type player, the sporting director who we know was at Red Bull Salzburg and was known to find those younger, you know, more savvier recruitments. Will will it be enough to win the Bundesliga? Perhaps will it be enough to compete in Europe based on how Bayern are right now? I'm not so sure of. Uh, and so that's kind of, I think, where we need to distinguish between what Bayern have, if it's enough or not. I think they have a, a you know, a full kind of hand trying to deal with the Bundesliga title. Um, but we know now that Leverkusen will have players returning from AFCON. The only real loss and will be a proper loss is Victor Boniface, who will be out till April, I believe. And they brought in players, so that will be a big loss. Um, but yeah, it's... Um, I'm not convinced, let me put it that way, by 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 Bayern's January signings, no. All right. So it sounds like you're trying to say that Eintracht Frankfurt, if there was any winner of the, all the Bundesliga clubs, that Eintracht Frankfurt was the winter transfer winner. <laughs> yeah, but I, but what I would say, but yeah, but uh, brilliant signings, brilliant signings. But I, I think it's also, if we're going to analyze this season as a whole, we look at kind of that summer as well, which we remember going into that summer, it was a huge turnover in the, in the sense that you were losing a, a Kolomuani basically when the season already started. You, lo you lost Lindstrom, two probably the best players for Eintracht in terms of output, et cetera. And then let's not forget uh, Indica and, and Kamada as well. And then you have you know, all bringing in these young players, at, you know, young ranging from 19 to, to 22 years old of age and putting that getting a team together from that is no kind of given. And so must be given credit to Dino Topmuller, Marcus Crescia. And it makes me very, um, it, it's very comforting to know that because you know that the players that they bring in for this transfer window and probably the outgoings as well in terms of the plan they have for them, you kind of trust them. Um, and that's that's a good feeling to have as a as a as a fan because there is that there is that record of of this being a well run club led by you know good good and smart people in lack of a better word. You mentioned well run club uh, people in charge, and I think this brings us to this, the very sad, but uh, it was known for quite a while news that uh, I'm talking Frankfurt president or outgoing president Peter Fisher is no longer with the club he had been at the helm for something like 20 years I mean he he, he basically could remember back to you know almost being in charge of the Eintracht when your dad was a player and he's been at part of the Eintracht for that long um, for you uh, the end of the Peter Fisher era uh, what, are, what are your kind of fond memories that you will have of the Eintracht outgoing president. I mean, you, you you mentioned there 24 years and we look back 24 years, it's pretty substantial in terms of what Eintracht have, have, have gone through. And we talked about that in terms of what Eintracht was and and kind of that yo-yo that sort of uh, existence. 
and uh, you know there's a lot of different people running a club but a, a president will be will be uh, will be you know so important to to the overall kind of structure of a club and so you know here's a president can look back back at a at a time in which Eintracht now are established european contenders who have won european league uh, trophies who've played champions league and to look back on that that's that is a legacy and we and i'm sure there will be people and sh their personal stories there that we will hear of and we will not hear of and and that is his part of that heritage but also looking back at what have eintracht become in this in this time i think that is what you look back on and think wow what what a legacy that is exactly what a turn around from the the yo-yo-ness of the 90s to eventual uh 2000s stability and 2010s and 2020s where uh, Eintracht establishes themselves as a top top third Bundesliga team that means European contention, European opportunities. And uh, here's hoping that the Eintracht come away. I mean, the Bundesliga title is a little uh, away from us, let's be real. But here's hoping that you never know. The Eintracht can get on a run uh, this spring. And once you play Jawa, get through that, and you never know what's beyond that. Maybe we lift another European trophy, another European trophy, a second European trophy in the last three seasons. You know, an Eintracht fan can dream, but you know what? Dreaming, let's let's make it a reality. Exactly. That's what that's what we are in the game for. We need to we need that. And and you know football is so much there's so much misery and frustration. We need also to to embrace and you put it well in terms of embracing those the, the time we're in, and you have obviously different clubs that you're supporting, and one of which is Eintracht, but they're all finding <laughs> themselves in good times, and that's important to joy because then it's 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 that hope we have as football fans, but also remembering amid all, all the frustration times or whatever, it's 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 these kind of moments in which they're lifting trophies and competing for trophies and those spells is that's that's what we're in it for. Hundred percent. And if anyone didn't get that little hint. He's talking about the Kansas City Chiefs folks and how they're going to win their third Super Bowl in four go seasons. <laughs> exactly, go Chiefs indeed. Uh, Marcus, lovely to have you back on the podcast. Where can we find your work that comes to Bundesliga? Yes, uh, well, I you introduced as you so well introduced me. You can find me at the the, the German Fußball Podcast, and uh, which I co-host alongside my my father Jan Fjordtoft. Um, and we are on uh, YouTube, the German Fußball Podcast. So uh, we put out videos and shorts there, and so that's where kind of you get the more personal touch with us. And then we're on all on all audio platforms, and then obviously I'm on under Twitter under my name. So um, yeah, for any Bundesliga fanatics, which I'm sure all everyone um, tuning into this will be, we try to touch upon Eintracht as much as possible within the obviously given parameters. Uh, so uh, yeah, it would be a, it would be an honor for us to, to welcome people onto the, our, our YouTube and our audio platforms. Brilliant. Thank you, Marcus, for being on Hey Eintracht Frankfurt, and we will be in contact with you as the years go by and seasons go by ways that you can get in contact with the podcast is at hef pod hey i'm kirk frankford on instagram facebook.com slash hef pod and of course at pod.com where you can find all the latest eintracht uh match day stats in real time and find out where fellow eintracht fans can be found so you can meet up and commiserate or celebrate in whatever fashion it may go with your fellow eintracht fans until next time cheers it's these kind of moments in which they're lifting trophies and competing for trophies, and that's what we're in it for.